Okay, so now what we're gonna cover today is how quick and easy it is to apply the OptiGlaze. Now this is just the glaze coating on top of the Cerasmart restoration. What we're gonna do now is take a gray, semi-coarse rubber wheel, okay? And um, if you're buying some type of a rubber wheel for your high speed, you also can use uh, rubber wheels in the cup shape or you can use uh, different types of rubber wheels that are more applicable uh, to your operatory. But in this case, we're gonna use a gray rubber wheel for a standard, uh, a standard laboratory handpiece. And we wanna make sure that we remove the button that's on the uh, restoration after um, it's milled. And we just go in circular motion. And then what I like to do is take the same rubber wheel and go over the entire restoration just to remove any of the burr marks that the milling machine may have created. And just very lightly, not pressing too hard. We don't want to destroy the margins. We don't want to take away any of the anatomy on the occlusal. Just get rid of those burr marks. And now we're ready to take this and sandblast the surface and also the intaglio. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna sandblast the surface, the entire surface of the Cerasmart restoration, very gently, not to get too close to the margins, give you an even consistency at around 25 to 50 microns of a luminous oxide. So now we're going to take the Cerasmart restoration and put it in the ultrasonic cleaner to make sure we get rid of any debris that's left over. So when that's done, we're going to take it over, wash it off, and get ready to optiglaze. So now what we want to do to make sure we get the best bond possible is use Ceramic Primer 2. This will create a, a better layer for the optiglaze to adhere to. So we take our brush that's provided in the optiglaze kit, and we just apply the Ceramic Primer 2 all over the restoration. Now this step isn't 100% necessary, but it does give you, uh, the studies show that it does give you a better bond of the optiglaze color. Um, some may just go directly to the optiglaze when they're glazing, and that's okay, but remember that the Ceramic Primer 2 will give you better adhesion and last over time. Okay, so now after the Ceramic Primer 2 dries, uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you how quick and easy it is to use the, just the OptiGlaze itself to get a nice glaze over the surface of the Cerasmart restoration. And literally just coat the entire surface with the glaze. Now, this OptiGlaze can be cured with any light that has a 405 wavelength. So you could use lab lights, uh, we at GC offer a, a light called the Labo light. You can also use different handheld lights, but just make sure that they have a 405 wavelength. Then once that is complete, we also offer a light called the light at GC. And it's as easy as light carrying the surface for 40 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and light cure that. So as you're light curing, make sure you rotate the crown to get all the different angles and make sure you cure all the angles. The occlusal surface, the mesial, the distal. So as you see, you have a really beautiful gloss and luster on the surface of the Cerasmart restoration. It was very easy, 40 seconds to, to light cure the OptiGlaze, and you have a really nice glaze. Um, some may ask what happens if the glaze was to wear off. Remember, this can also be touched up with the OptiGlaze in the mouth. Um, also, Cerasmart has the unique ability to self-polish itself. So, um, and not only that, but because the OptiGlaze and the OptiGlaze color are both, they both use this special nano ceramic um, network and structure, they're very similar in, the, in those high physical properties. Additionally, as you can see here, the material doesn't rub off. It doesn't have an air inhibition uh, layer, so it's really, it keeps that shine without that sticky layer that's on the surface.